Welcome to the original American Warrior Radio Show. I'm your host, Garen Cohn, an Air Force veteran, retired legal advocate for veterans, founder of AVET Project, a VA accredited claims agent, and founder of AVET Appeals. If you or someone you know ever wore the uniform of the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, National Guard or Reserves, or the Space Force, you've come to the right place. American Warrior Radio Show always efforts to bring you great information about VA benefits, news, notes, interviews, and current events for all issues, military and veteran related. Our background music here on American Warrior Radio Show is graciously provided by none other than Stephen Hobbs, combat vet and very talented mill hop artist. Let's get right into the heart of the matter. Hello, everybody out there in American Warrior Radio Show land. This is Garen Cohn again, and we've got a special episode of Heal the Warrior, Heal the Country with none other than Dr. Scott Fairchild. Hi, Doc. How are you? Hey, it's so great to be here this afternoon. I've been looking forward to it, and let's share some good information with all the people out there. Well, and there's so much to learn from you, because not only, well, give a little background, tell our viewers again that just tuning in who you are and what you've done. Well, we're always in the process of learning, and uh, I was on active duty for about 21 years with the Army, 10 of it as a psychologist, and working since that time, I've worked with a lot of veterans, I'd say about 3,000 of them, helped them with their VA claims and helped them with treatment, so enjoy what I do. I tried to retire, but uh, unfortunately, the folks wouldn't let me, so I continue to work about three days a week, uh, half days, three half days a week, continuing to help our veterans. It's brother taking care of brother. Veteran exactly. taking care of brother and sister taking care of brother and sister. And I got to tell right. you, the need just continues to increase, especially <laughs> with some of the emphasis from VA and trying to reach out to underserved populations, particularly under the PACT Act. There's a press exactly. release I'll go over on another episode. But yeah. since we've got you here now, Doc, I want right. our viewers and listeners to know a little bit about one of your hallmarks, which is delivering all sorts of... <laughs> information and counseling, and as you said, even assistance with claims for something called PTSD. Tell us what that is. Well, absolutely. You know, when we experience trauma, and you know, the interesting thing is, is that if you go back a couple uh, years, uh, back when I was in school, there was maybe one book on post-traumatic stress disorder. It was written by a friend of mine and colleague from the University of Denver. It was written by Tom Williams and his friend, Jim Goodwin. It was the first DAV publication on post-traumatic stress disorder. And it, now we could fill my entire clinic uh, with books that have been written about post-traumatic stress disorder. It's so important to know that when you experience a trauma in life, it doesn't have to be in the military specifically. It can be robbery, rape, assault, hurricane, tornado, uh, bike accident, bus accident, car accident, anything like that that shakes up your life. Uh, that impacts your life in a negative way. Uh, Outside the realm of normal human experience. Exactly, exactly. So you experience that trauma. And once you, you know, we talk about big T's and little T's. The big T's would be the robbery, rape, assault, hurricane, tornado, car accident. The little T's might be, you know, parental abuse or, or things like that that stretch out over time and may not be as specific and significant. Uh, well, they're significant over time, but they're not may not be as specific. So once you experience that trauma, it leaves an impression in your brain. Uh, in fact, I'm taking one of my veterans down to Delray Beach tomorrow to have his brain scanned. And I'm actually going to go through a brain scan myself. And the reason we're doing that is we want to see the impact of it in the brain. Uh, in his particular case, we're doing it for uh, Social Security disability because they don't they don't believe him, if you will. And the, the poor guy. Just... Back up for just a second, Doc. You mentioned that when you started your career after your education, what have you, and got into psychology full time in the Army, there was one publication about post traumatic stress disorder. Are you telling me and everybody that's viewing and listening to this that the DSM, the, the, the Bible you guys use, the right. statistical manual, did not have it plugged in at that time, or was it under You're... some other name? You're absolutely right, and and in fact, uh, in the early uh, uh, in the early DSM, uh, it was kind of called war neurosis or, or uh, shell shock. Uh, and then one of the DSM manuals actually left it out. You know, we must have been treating it very well because it disappeared. <laughs> and, and then in DSM three, it came back. And since that time, it's been in DSM three and the subsequent DSMs 
diagnostic and statistical manuals all the way up through DSM-5. Uh, and DSM-5 has added acute stress disorder, uh, which is basically post-traumatic stress disorder that lasts less than 30 days. Uh, acute absolutely. and transitory, meaning it happened and it's gone away, it's not symptomatic any longer? That is correct. If it lasts, if the symptoms last longer than 30 days, then we uh, we call it post-traumatic stress disorder. And we've been treating that uh, for quite some time. Uh, and we learn new, I might add. Yeah, we need we learn new and ingenious ways of treating it. I'm looking around here, and sure enough, we have many different ways. We do EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Uh, we have a little contraption here called the Alpha Stim, and we have individuals with post traumatic stress disorder uh, put that Alpha Stim on their ears uh, and hook it up, and it diminishes anxiety it reduces depression, and it improves sleep. Uh, three of the major characteristics of post-traumatic stress disorder. Go over that again. You said three major characteristics, just so everybody remembers. It reduces the anxiety. Well, first, let's go back to the brain. Let's kind of define it in the brain. Uh, in the brain, we find that individuals deep inside the brain in an area called the thalamic nucleus, that's where your emotions are, are controlled. And so in that thalamic nucleus, when it is, quote, we call it lit up, and we'll find that on the scans tomorrow, uh, when it is lit up or overactive, we see that a person has depression. Uh, there's depression inside the brain, deep in the thalamic nucleus. Then outside on the side parts of the brain, well, it's still deep, but it's more to the side, we have the basal ganglia. These basal ganglia sit there, and they are overactive, and when they're overactive, it reflects it reflects your anxiety level. And so we have the anxiety, so we have the depression in the center, the anxiety level above it, and then way up toward the top of the brain, we have something called the anterior cingulate gyrus, which controls our letting go of things. And when it's overactive, we cannot let go of stuff. So we call that the PTSD diamond. And you've got depression, anxiety, and stuck on it, can't let go. Uh, and subsequently, uh, that's how it differs from a diagnosis of anxiety or a diagnosis of depression. It has all of those aspects, and it needs to be uh, it needs to be treated, and that's what we do. Well, for instance, somebody that's been over in the sandbox and has witnessed a traumatic event, maybe they pulled the trigger and took somebody else's life, one of the combatants. Maybe it was an explosion, an IED, whatever the instance was, mm -hmm. it left this mark in their brain. And if it doesn't go away over, like you said, 30 days, then you're looking at it. What are some of the signs and symptoms the folks watching American Warrior Radio Show can be looking for if they don't know? Maybe they're walking out there in life right now, having gotten out sure. of the military, working at a grocery store, and they can't understand why a box falling might startle them. Give us some, some examples of that. Well, initially, one has to obviously have exposure to the trauma. Uh, and, you know, having exposure to the trauma, I'll just use the example of the young man who gave me his permission, uh, who I'm taking down for the uh, scan tomorrow. Uh, it, speaking of exposure, he probably is in the category of maximum. He had 36 months of constant exposure to combat, both in Iraq and in the Korengal Valley. Some of you out there have seen the movie Restrepo. Uh, he was there with Doc Restrepo when Doc Restrepo died there. Oh. And so... And he has the names of 12 of his fellow buddies who he lost in combat in the Korengal Valley, deadliest place on earth, tattooed on his back. Uh, so he meets the criteria, should we say, of uh, exposure to trauma. And so that's the exposure initially. And what type of symptoms does he experience? Exactly. He experiences confusion, uh, difficulty focusing and concentrating, uh, an exaggerated startle response. And some people will say, what's an exaggerated startle response? I love what a little old lady who is married to a Vietnam veteran said. She said, my husband, had, you, you ask about an exaggerated startle response. She said, let me paint the picture. She said, when he's resting or lying down or in bed in the morning, I wake him up with a broomstick. That paints a picture. Picture paints sure a does. thousand words. Uh, so... Uh, that is an exaggerated startle response. Individuals will obviously also experience anxiety. Uh, they will re-experience the trauma in some cases 
uh, driving on a military base, sometimes for folks from Iraq, driving under an overpass, seeing a child with a backpack. Uh, all of these things can be triggers uh, to bring back those memories. So they tend to then next cluster of symptoms is avoid. They avoid situations that can bring back those symptoms. So they stay away from the, the Veterans Memorial Wall downtown, or they stay away from the VFW, or they stay away from, stay away from, stay away from. And before you know it, they are isolating uh, because it's only safe to stay in one's man cave or woman cave uh, at home. Uh, in addition to that, we will have uh, increased arousal. And when we experienced increased arousal, that could be a hypersensitivity to the environment. That could be that exaggerated startle response. Uh, it also could mean that I'm trying to get to sleep. I'm trying to get to sleep. I can't sleep. I sleep for an hour. I have a bad dream and I wake up. So they may experience also bad dreams. Uh, revivification, reliving of the event, or sometimes a dream just about vulnerability. That isn't specifically related to combat, but vulnerable. I woke up this morning and told my wife, I had a dream last night in which uh, a group of my friends and I were at a place having dinner and all of a sudden, sudden somebody came in shooting. Uh, so that would be a dream related to vulnerability. Uh, so those types of things. And sometimes those dreams can even include night sweats uh, where your body goes into a fight or flight response, rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, tightness in the chest, Sweating while he or she is sleeping, this can happen exactly tossing and turning, uh, and even screaming or even assaulting someone who might be there sleeping with you. Well, I know we only have you for, for a few more minutes here on this episode of Heal the Warrior, Heal the Country. Let's say there's a vet there in Tennessee, let's say it's a female vet, and she was involved in a horrific instance of an IED explosion. And yes. she's experiencing some of the signs and symptoms that you just discussed. What can they do? Maybe she doesn't even, maybe she's not even aware that the VA has benefits. Just on the treatment portion of it, what can she do? Now that she's heard a few of these signs and symptoms, what should she do? Definitely connect with a local provider. Connect with a provider. It doesn't necessarily have to be the VA. It can be. But, you know, if you connect with a local provider that's under your insurance or, or direct pay, uh, and one can find a lot of good providers uh, at emdr.org. EMDR is a process. EMDR.org. EMDR is a process that's used for treating trauma. And so if one goes to emdr.org, you can actually see people listed in your city and you can see if they focus on treating PTSD. Kind of a pre-screening effort on the veterans part there. Exactly, exactly. So you're not just going to, as we used to say on active duty, you're not just going to Joe or Jane the Ragman. Okay. Well, exactly. Yeah. Now, I want people out there in AWR land to understand you do uh, telemedicine as well, right? We do. We take care of folks by telehealth. Uh, with a secure uh, VC connection, VSEE connection, that is HIPAA compliant. And we talk with folks, we work with them. Uh, I'm still doing a lot of um, compensation and pension evaluations, DBQs, disability benefits questionnaires, the form that gets you into the VA for appropriate compensation. And How I'll can someone out there contact you, Doc? Because I'm always a bit leery sure. sending a vet to a provider who may or may not be good, but maybe they don't have the, well, few of them are going to have the experience that you have, the hands-on experience in the military, as well as all of your ongoing efforts to help vets. So I want them to be sure they get a good provider, somebody sure. that's you know qualified and has a, the proper empathy, if that's the word, has a real understanding of what they might be going through. So setting that aside, how can they contact you, Doc? They can reach me directly. I mean, they can go directly, uh, reach me directly at 321-307-0282. Call me directly, send me a text directly, uh, or send me a text, uh, uh, an email directly at fairscottl at aol.com, F-A-I-R-S-C-O-T-T-L, capital L, at aol.com. And I'll be happy to respond to them if I can help them. I will ensure that I get them to someone who can in their in their local area. 
and that's key. And I know you're, you, you've signed back on to AWR and we're doing Heal the Warrior, Heal the Country segments from here till whenever, when, whenever exactly. you were all the vets. But I appreciate you sharing that information. I hope if you didn't get it, our producer, John, is going to have those contact information number and the email for you. If you're out there and you're struggling or you know somebody that is, here's the perfect example of somebody that really can make a difference in helping you to establish your diagnosis, which is key with the VA. You have to have something happen while you're in service. And Doc talked about the traumatic event. And I'm sure he's got a whole lot of information he can provide regarding how you can qualify for that. Right, Doc? Exactly. And don't forget about military sexual trauma. We see both males and females, and that is, is very prevalent. And anything that occurred on active duty in the lines of military sexual trauma is also treatable and is also com compensatable uh, under the VA. So it's important to identify those things, get in contact with myself or someone else. Uh, and so that we can, first of all, get you the, the what you deserve to have in compensation and then get you treated so that you can improve your status. If you do run across somebody who says, VA or otherwise, that PTSD is, quote, curable, just keep on going because it is not curable. It is treatable and you can eventually learn how to manage your symptoms much better and it is less intrusive. Uh, so it is treatable in that regard, but not, quote, curable. And Dr. Scott Fairchild, our guest here on American Warrior Radio Show with his segment, Heal the Warrior, Heal the Country, just gave you the nuts and bolts of it. If you think you or someone you know is affected by PTSD or, as you mentioned, MST, military sexual trauma, even depression and other anxiety disorders, exactly. I encourage you to contact Dr. Scott Fairchild because he is the man. He's who we have relied on. He has treated, as he said, thousands and thousands of veterans and getting them the diagnosis, and then furthering their claim with the VA. So, Doc, thanks once again for joining us, and I really appreciate everything you continue to do to help our brothers and sisters in arms. It's been my pleasure. We are here for you. Outstanding. Everybody, American Warrior Radio Show, Dr. Scott Fairchild, Heal the Warrior, Heal the Country. Stay tuned for future episodes, and until then, don't forget, thank a vet. Hi everyone, it's Garen Cohn with American Warrior Radio. I'm here with my good friend Christian. We're here to deliver a very important message about a crisis in our land. Suicide prevention, more specifically, veteran suicide prevention. 22 a day are taking their own lives. This must stop. This can't continue. If you or someone you know is contemplating suicide, please know that God has tomorrow planned for you. Don't take your own life. And just remember, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem.